In a world where you can't stay dead, Kamari Ganda's blood, a vampire who can't use magic or suck blood, gets stuck as one of the seven Crimson Lords, tough leaders in the Molnite Empire. To cover up her lack of skills, she plays the part of a brutal conqueror to her troops, aided by her maid, Vilhaz. But when a vampire from her past pops up to offer, Kamari's life gets even more damn dangerous. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more epic tales. The story kicks off in a showdown between beastmen and vampires. The vampires, all hyped on their magic, get cocky about their upcoming win. Kostel, a vampire, warns them not to get complacent, stressing how much the Empire's first campaign is on the line. Kamari, a noble born into a line of generals but without magical skills, struggles hard under everyone's expectations. She dreams of peace, but she wakes up to her harsh reality. Kamari meets Vilhazel, her new maid, who spills the tea that Kamari's been unexpectedly made a Crimson Lord by the Empress. Kamari's memory of the contract is fuzzy, blaming the Empress' late-night visit for that. At the palace, the Empress gives Kamari a warm AF greeting, telling her to think of her as a friend. She lays out the deal of being a Crimson Lord, basically saying Kamari's got to win hella wars to snag the throne, or else she's toast. Kamari, feeling hella stressed, gets a squad of 500 soldiers from the 7th Army unit, complete with some sketchy-ass vampires. Doubting her own skills, the Empress tells her to flex some strength to her troops. Vilhaz has got her back, but Kamari's still hella skeptical. Rolling up to her unit, Kamari fumbles with the door and ends up accidentally beheading a traitorous vampire in her panic. Vil's like, nice one, and plays it off as a big brain move. Meeting Castle and the troops, Kamari fakes some big confidence, with Vil hyping her up even more. Her speed's a bit wobbly, but they somehow smash their first battle against the kingdom. Kamari claims the dub, earning mad respect from her troops, even though she's low-key questioning what the hell she's gotten herself into. A journalist bombards Kamari with a million questions, but she shuts that down real quick, saying she'll prove her strength through actions, not words. She vows to crush rival commanders and bring mad glory to the Empire. After the battle, she sees enemies coming back to life, thanks to some freaky-ass dark cores, ancient artifacts packing insane magical power. Kamari thinks it's all BS. The next day, Vil hits Kamari with Mela's over-the-top article, leaving her mortified. Trying to dodge her duties, Kamari gets blackmailed by Vil, who's got her love story as leverage. Kamari is forced to suck it up and comply, while Vil's lovey-dovey vibes totally freak her out. During a meeting with the unit execs, Kamari throws out rewards for their recent performance. Castel suggests new outfits, Melon shows off a sick rap bow, and Wolf Bellius just chills. After the meeting, Castel drops a bombshell, showing Kamari a classified doc about an old incident where 100 vamps got wiped out. Stepping outside, they run into a masked chick who's got plans to off the Empress. She dodges their attacks like it's nothing, vanishes, and leaves them with a message for Kamari. Next morning, Kamari's side-eyeing Vil's ridiculous outfit but finds out she's got a packed schedule, including picking out a magical beast, which actually gets her hyped. At the stables, she bonds with a beast named Bucillus. Trying to ride it, Bucillus bolts at breakneck speed. Meanwhile, at the training grounds, Johan, a vamp Kamari accidentally hurt, is plotting his revenge. Kamari, flying in on Bustalus, accidentally kicks Johan. Still kicking, Johan goes for an attack, but Vil trips him up. Kamari, dizzy, pokes Johan in the eyes, acting like she meant it, and gets cheers. Johan challenges her to a duel, and even though she's scared, Vil reassures her through an earpiece that she's got her back. During the duel, Vil poisons Johan's lunch, weakening him. She then guides Kamari to trigger a trap, sending Johan into one of Vil's hidden holes. The troops are floored, thinking Kamari's pulling off advanced magic. Castle speculates she's got a skill to hide her magic. Kamari, still clueless, learns from Vil about the 52 holes and stays put. Johan crawls out, but Vil's landmines knock him down again. As he inches closer, Kamari freaks out, but he collapses, letting her claim victory. Afterwards, Kamari chills in a bath, thinking about thanking Vil, who shows up with injured hands from digging all those holes. Vil explains she only uses poison magic and manually dug the holes. They share a moment of gratitude. Kamari questions Vil's clinginess, and Vil hints at some shady past crime. With Bellius and Vil, Kamari hits up an imperial party. The Empress praises Kamari's quick wins, saying luck played a part. Kamari turns down a glass of blood, 
and the Empress spills the tea on her dad's pan to make her a Crimson Lord. She reassures Kamari of her love and support, telling her to enjoy the party and not stress. Three years back, Millicent rolls up on Kamari, straight up hating on her for being the teacher's pet. Kamari's PTSD kicks in as Millicent goes full attack mode, but Bedia steps in, taking the hit. Vil jumps into the mix, while the Empress tries to calm Millicent down, who then spills she's repping the inverse moon. Millicent dips with Kamari as her hostage. Later, Velius's injuries reveal that objects like Millicent's dagger can mess with Dark Core's healing powers. The Council suspects there's a snitch among them, cause Millicent's escape was way too smooth. Castell asks about Kamari's whereabouts, and Vil lies, saying she's out scouting the enemy. Back in her room, Kamari relives the brutal bullying from Millicent, feeling just as messed up as she did back then. Vil walks in, Castell tracks down Kamari using a strand of her hair. Vil's kindness throws Kamari for a loop, and then she gets a letter from Vil with her true feelings. Vil comforts Kamari before getting stabbed in the back by Millicent. Millicent promises an even worse fate for Vil later, snatching her and making threats. Kamari, wrapped up in a blanket, initially decides to go full hermit mode forever, but has a change of heart, remembering their bond. Vil's letter floats over to Kamari, leading her to read about their past at the academy. Vil endured endless bullying from Millicent and her crew until Kamari saved her life from a deadly attack by Millicent. Vil became Kamari's ride or die, vowing to make up for her past cowardice by being Kamari's loyal sidekick. Touched by Vil's loyalty, Kamari bolts to rescue her. She finds a freaked out castle, and they rally the troops for a showdown against the Inverse Moon. Despite Bellius being back in action, Kamari insists on going solo against the enemy. In a chapel, Millicent has Vil captive with an assist from Johan. Johan, realizing Millicent's true colors, tries to stop her but gets stabbed. Kamari walks in, shocked to see Vil in danger. Millicent demands Kamari's return, but Kamari tells her to slow the hell down, digging into her past. We're taken into Millicent's upbringing, where her father drives her to outdo everyone else. Amatsu from the Paradise is brought in to train her. He introduces himself by throwing her down, teaching her about core implosion, a power that defies the damn laws of nature. Amatsu explains its gain through extreme pain and trains her relentlessly, holding back healing to make it tougher. Despite lacking core explosion, Millicent sticks with it under Amatsu's coaching, always compared to Komari by her father. At the academy, Millicent finds out about Vil's core implosion and demands a demo. Vil explains her power, which shows the drinker's future after consuming her blood. Millicent, after drinking Vil's blood, is called pitiful by Vil. In retaliation, Millicent bullies Vil, letting out her frustration. Kamari interrupts Millicent's attempt to off Vil, reminding her of her father's comparisons. Furious, Millicent targets Kamari, leading to a showdown where she tries to swipe Kamari's mon's keepsake. Kamari, using her core implosion, takes up Millicent, leading to her getting exiled by Kamari's father. With no options left, Millicent joins the inverted moonving to get back at Kamari. Kamari crashes into Vil and despairs over not being able to save her. Vil reassures Kamari, giving her a taste of her blood for a future vision. Kamari's eyes go red as she awakens her core implosion, shocking Millicent with her power. Kamari's squad is stunned to see Millicent pulling off special grade magic, but Kamari shuts her down easily. Pumped up by her squad, Kamari disarms Millicent and finishes her, ending the damn battle. Kamari wakes up to find Vil by her side and feels the aftermath of the battle. She briefly thinks they're in heaven. Vil remembers Kamari's father's advice, revealing that Kamari first unlocked her core implosion at three years old after drinking blood. It led to her developing a hatred for blood. Reading the newspaper, Kamari learns of Millicent's capture, assuming someone else took her down. She talks about her future with Vil, reassuring her of their bond despite her fears. Kamari decides to keep Vil as her maid, showing how much she relies on her. At night, an official gets whacked by a hooded girl, Vilain. Castell shows Kamari merch featuring her face, which she finds whack. Vil reveals she already copped a hundred of them. They're interrupted by Mascarel, one of the seven Crimson Lords, who straight up roasts Kamari for her approach to warfare. Kamari throws down the gauntlet, challenging her to a spa at the next meeting. Kamari meets with Empress Karen, who jokes about her tasting her popsicle leftovers. Karen brings up Kamari's father's murder and tasks her with finding the culprit. Kamari throws a fit but gets promised a week off. 
Karen teams up with Sakuna, shocking Kamari. Sakuna's out for revenge on the terrorist for offing her and hands Kamari a letter introducing herself. She lays out her backstory and could be accidentally offing another Crimson Lord and wanting redemption. Kamari finds her kinda cool but gets blocked by an envious vill. Kamari decides to send her crew on the mission, and they're all in, suggesting a reward for whoever naps the terrorist. They misinterpret Kamari's offer of zoo tickets as a date with her and bolt off to catch the terrorist. Kamari meets Sakuna, along with a priest named Heldius, who's also a Crimson Lord. Kamari invites Sakuna to lunch, where Sakuna spills more about herself and her past screw-ups. Kamari's taken aback by Sakuna's crew's loyalty despite knowing her flaws. Vil, fed up with Kamari and Sakuna getting along, pushes Kamari to start the meeting. She warns about the terrorists' core implosion ability to mess with memories. They decide to patrol the palace at night, despite Kamari's gripes. Kamari's outburst is misunderstood by the crowd, but she saves face by showing her dedication to work. They respond with applause. An explosion goes off, and they rush to find Kamari's unit beat by Mascarel. Mascarel attacks Kamari, claiming to stop her unit's destructions. She vows to vote Kamari out of the next conference. Later, Vil spills that the blood bun gifted to Mascarel will lead to Kamari's downfall and explosion. Sakuna pledges her support for Kamari, who sees her as a sister figure. Vil offers to handle the issue and asks for a pat on the head like Sakuna got. Vil wonders why Kamari doesn't fight Mascarel, but Kamari prefers talking to avoid fights. The Crimson Lords meet, and Mascarel questions if Kamari is a good fighter. Others say frontline experience is important. Mascarel says Kamari didn't do well in school. The Empress defends Kamari, saying she earned a position. Mascarel challenges Kamari to a fight. They vote on keeping Kamari. A lord is found dead, causing chaos. Mascarel blames Kamari, but Vil says she killed the lord to protect Kamari. Mascarel suggests a war, but Odellan says they should join another war instead. At home, Kamari feels sad and thinks about giving up. Vil asks about her dreams, and Kamari says she wants to be a writer. She worries after giving one of her stories to Sakuna. Kamari goes to get it back and finds Sakuna's room full of pictures of her. Sakuna admits she admires Kamari and treats her dolls as real. They bond over worries about the war and become friends. Sakuna suggests adding Heldius to their group. At training, a soldier notices Sakuna's dedication. Sakuna and Kamari talk about why terrorists act, thinking they might be forced to buy threats to their families. Kamari decides to confront the hostage taker. Sakuna tries to stop her, but Vil arrives and takes Kamari away. Meanwhile, Sakuna is forced to work for the Inverse Moon, who threaten her family. They want her to find something important and warn her about past mistakes. Sakuna goes to find Millicent for help. Sakuna and Millicent shoot the breeze over tea. Sakuna asks why Millicent is out and about. Millicent drops hints it's because of some shady circumstances. Sakuna suspects Millicent knows she's gunning for the Inverse Moon leadership. Millicent suggests Sakuna let Kamari sip her blood if things get desperate. Meanwhile, folks are glued to their screens, watching the Crimson Lord's War, the mission. Grab a Crimson Sphere in the castle ruins. Kamari's crew goes head-to-head -head with Mascarels. Vil and Kamari get jumped by Delphine's army. They make a break for it, with Delphine's crew hot on their tails. Sakuna orders her squad to nab Mascarel using her powers. Delphine comes after Kamari and Vil. They make a run for it, with Delphine right behind them. Despite the attacks, they make it to the sphere's location. Mascarel pins mass murder on Kamari. Sakuna shuts Mascarel down and spills about her past as a terrorist. Kamari tries to console Sakuna, but gets knocked out by Sakuna's spell. Sakuna wants to spill the beans solo. Kamari dives into Sakuna's mind, a cosmic memory dump. Sakuna dishes out some good vibes from her fam, but drops the bomb about the inverse moon threatening to obliterate the dark core. She spills the tragic beans about her fam's death and how she got roped into manipulating memories for the inverse moon by some snake promising to save them. To make amends, she plans to tweak Kamari's memories to make her a sis, just like she did with Heldis. Kamari ain't down to be offed, but she's up for some real sisterhood. They hug it out, and Sakuna's in tears, reminded of her actual sister's comfort. Their moment gets wrecked by Odilon, who attacks Sakuna, revealing he's been pulling her strings. Odilon orders Sakuna to off Kamari, and when she steps in, he hurts her. 
Sukuna chugs a super elixir from Odilon, boosting her powers to go ham on him. Despite her efforts, the elixir messes her up, and she goes down. Odilon, finding this amusing, smacks her before Komari wakes up, powered by Sukuna's blood. Komari demands more of Sukuna's blood, going all pale with white hair as she orders Odilon to apologize. The Empress and Komari's dad watch the brawl, chatting about Komari's unique power, which changes with the blood she sucks down. Komari patches up Sukuna, shocking Odilon. Pissed, Komari makes Odilon say sorry, but he mouths off, pushing her to retaliate hard, freezing and snapping his arm before dropping him. Komari shatters Odilon's blade with a touch before he poofs away. In his lair, Odilon spills to Amatsu about the flop plan, thanks to Komari. But a servant betrays him, stabbing him. Sakuna messes with everyone's minds with her core implosion, making them attack Odilon. Furious, he faces off with Komari, who demands an apology for Sakuna. When he refuses, Komari snaps his neck and levels his base. Days later, Vil tends to Komari, who insists Vil takes a break too. Sakuna says sorry for the mess, but Komari's cool with it. Sakuna tears up, touched by the forgiveness, especially from Hildes. Komari invites Sakuna to crash with her, causing a mix-up with Vil. Komari plans to kick back for two weeks, inviting Sakuna as a pal, making Vil jelly. Komari's beach vacay feels like a letdown. Sakuna digs her swimsuit, revealing she's forced into deadly battles as punishment. Vil breaks up Komari's admiration for Sakuna, reminding her of their mission, meeting Aruka's General Nelia. Despite Komari's suspicion of Nelia's letter, the Empress sees it as a chance to suss out the enemy. The squad vies for a selfie with Nelia at Daydream Paradise Tower. Vil ensures Komari's safety with poison and Sakuna's foresight. Nelia, hit to Komari's potential memory loss, wants to see her strength, amping up Komari as she brags about her kills. Komari fibs about offing 50,000 people, impressing Nelia, who spills her plan for global domination, suggesting a partnership. Sakuna disagrees, while Vol thinks Komari could go solo. Komari sticks to her guns, aiming for world peace instead of power. Belius barges in, reporting a scrap with Aruka soldiers, resulting in their accidental offing. Castel raises the tower, triggering Nelia's attack on Kumari. Vil steps in, spilling prior intel and evacuating them. Vil tells the squad to bail, while Kumari hopes everyone's safe. The Empress spills about Kala Amatsu, envoy from Paradise Nation, looking to buddy up. Kala pitches an alliance due to beef with Aruka, hinting at shared interests with the Empire. The Empress confirms Aruka's turf wars since going Republic, piquing the reporter's interest. They break down Aruka's shift from monarchy to Republic under the current prez. Kamari questions Kala's approach to enemies, preferring to dodge unnecessary drama. Kala vines with that, expressing a desire for a war-free world, calming Kamari as she reveals her own pacifism. Kostel drops off a threatening letter from Nelia, making Kala suspicious. Kamari tries to clear the air but spots Kostel eavesdropping, so she fakes a savage persona. Kala feels duped, leading the Empress to order Kamari to offer. Kamari hesitates, but Kostel and the Empress push. Vil jumps in, causing chaos that convinces Kala to ally with the Empire to dodge death. Meanwhile, Nelia plans to nab Kamari to avoid her father's fate, dead set on manipulating her into serving her world-bending ambitions. In a heartfelt flashback, Nelia finds refuge in her father's embrace, who introduces her to the tough-as-nails tutor, Yulani Gandersblood. Yulan warns